Welcome to the Viva Boss of Anatomy. Today's topic is articulated hand. Now the articulated hand is made up of three types of the bone, three groups of the bone that are the carpal bones, metacarpal bones and the phalanges. We will see these bones one by one but before that we will see the side determination of an articulated hand. Okay. The first thing, these carpal bones are facing proximally the phalanx is facing distally. The second point, the articulated hand is having two surfaces, palmar and the dorsal. Out of these two surfaces, the palmar surface overall, they are concave. So, this concavity of an articulated hand should facing upward or you can say anteriorly. Whereas, the dorsal surface or a convexity is facing inferiorly or dorsally. The third point, medial or lateral. Laterally the thumb lies, so the thumb is having only two phalanges. So the finger which is having only two phalanges should lies laterally. So the given articulated hand is of a right side. Now we will see the first type of the bones in the articulated hand that are the eight carpal bones. Now among these eight carpal bones, the four bones are placed in the proximal row and the four bones are arranged in the distal row. First we will identify which one is a distal row. Now you can see the four bone which are in the distal row will articulate it with the five metacarpal bone distal. So these four bones will form are, are the bones of a distal row and above it, immediately above proximal to it, you will have the remaining four bones of a proximal uh, row. Now we will see the, which are the name of these bones of the proximal row first and then the distal row. Now we will see the bones from lateral to medial side. First from the lateral to medial, uh, name of the bone from lateral to medial side in the proximal row. The most lateral bone in the proximal row is a scaphoid. Scaphoid. Medial to the scaphoid you will have a lunate. Medial to the lunate you will have a triquetral. And articulate to the triquetral you will have the PC form bone. So these four bones are the bones of a proximal row. Now the bones of the distal row from lateral to medial side. These are trapezium, most lateral, medial to it, trapezoid, medial to it, capite, and most medially in the distal row, hematoma. You can remember the arrangement of this bone by make one mnemonic from the first letter of all the bones that are SLTP of a proximal row from lateral to medial side. C looks to pretty. C for scaphoid, looks for lunate, 2 for triquetral, pretty for PC form. In the distal row, try to catch her. T for trapezium, again T to trapezoid, C for capitate, H for hamlet. Now we will see the identification point of an individual bone. The first, we will start with the proximal row bone, most lateral, that is the scaphoid. Now the scaphoid, the shape of the scaphoid bone is a boat shape. You can see it is a boat shape. And another identification point, literally it will present the large tubercle. So the large tubercle with the boat shape is a scaphoid. Now medial to the scaphoid, you will have the lunate one. If you see the shape of the lunate bone, it is a half moon shape or a crescentic shape of bone. Half moon. Half, uh, half moon shape bone or a crescentic shape uh, bone, lunate one. The third bone is a triquetral. If you see the shape of a triquetral, it is a pyriform in the shape. Pyriform in the shape. And the last bone, that is the PC form bone, is a P shape bone. Okay. So these are the bones, identification of the bones of the proximal 
row. Now the bones of the distal row, the first bone, that is the trapezium. The trapezium is roughly cuboidal in the shape. It is roughly cuboidal in the shape. Identification point in it are, it is having one crest and the groove on its palmed surface. The second bone in the distal row is a trapezoid. Now the shape of a trapezoid is like a shoe of a baby. It's a baby shoe, say trapezoid. The third bone in the distal row is capitate. Now the capitate is the largest carpal bone among the eight bones and it is having the rounded head which will articulate with the scaphoid bone. And the last bone is hamate. Hamate is a wedge shaped bone. It is being wedged by the surrounding bone and it is having the hook on its palmar surface. So these are the identification points of all carpal bones. Now we will see the important attachment of the carpal bones. Now the carpal bones form the four pillars that is the four carpal bones of a corner that are the scaphoid, trapezium, Pisciform and the habit. All the attachment of a carpal bones are attached to these four bones. First, first we will see the common attachment to the, all the four bones. That is the flexure retinaculum. The flexure retinaculum attached to the, all the four bones and convert this concavity of a carpal uh, canal into the carpal tunnel. Now, most important thing: some structure will passes below. This retinaculum means through the carpal tunnel and some structure will passes above the flexure retinaculum. The first way we see the structure passes above the flexure retinaculum that are the palmar cutaneous branch of a ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve itself, ulnar vessels, then palmar cutaneous nerve of a median nerve and the tendon of palmaris longus. Now we will see the structure passes below the flexure retinaculum. So that are the tendons of flexure digitorum profundus, tendons of flexure digitorum superficialis, the median nerve, tendon of flexure pollicis longus, tendon of flexure carpi radialis and the radial bursa and the ulnar bursa. Out of uh, the remaining attachment, the first the scaphoid bone. The large tubercle of a scaphoid bone provides attachment to the fibers of abductor polysis brevis. Second, the crest of a trapezium will provide the origin of a three muscle that will form the thinner aminus that are abductor polysis brevis, flexor polysis brevis and opponents polysis. Now the groove in the trapezium will lodges the tendon of flexor carpi radialis uh, tendon. Now the attachment on the PC form bone. The PC form bone provides attachment of flexor carpi ulnaris and abductor digiti minimi. Whereas the hook of the hammer gives origin to the flexure digiti minimi and opponents digiti minimi. So these are the attachment of a carpal bones. Now the important uh, about the ossification you have to remember among these eight carpal bone the capitate bone is the first bone to ossify and the PC form is the last bone to complete the ossification. Now we will see the important applied anatomy of the carpal bones. First the PC form bone is a, called the sesamoid bone and it is developed in the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris that you have to remember. The scaphoid is a common carpal bone to be fractured and in the 10 to 15 percent of the cases when the fracture occurs it will undergo avascular necrosis. Necrosis means cell death and avascular means the absence of its blood supply. So it is a cell death or the part of the bone will undergo death due to the deprive of it of its blood supply. This will happen because normally what happen the scaphoid will get uh, will provides uh, get its blood supply from the both the end the proximal and as well proximal as well as from the distal end. 
but in 10 to 15 percent of cases it will get its blood supply only from the distal end okay and whenever in such case the fracture occurred through the waist of a scaphoid bone its proximal part will deprive of its blood supply because the connection will loss due to the fracture so the proximal part will undergo avascular necrosis now the second thing the most common carpal bond to undergo the dislocation is a lunate bond and its dislocation occurs anteriorly so it will compress the median nerve which was passing through the carpal tunnel and it will produce the carpal tunnel syndrome now we will see the metacarpal bone. The metacarpal bones are five in number and they are the example of miniature long bones. Means it is having only one epiphysis. They are given number from lateral to medial side. So the most lateral metacarpal bone that is the metacarpal bones of the thumb is number one, medial to eight, two, three, four and the five. Now the common feature of a, all the metacarpal bone, each metacarpal bone is having the base which is facing proximally, the sharp and the head facing distal. We will see one by one, first the base, the base of the, all the metacarpal bones are expanded and it will articulate with the bones of the distal row of the carpal bones. Now out of this five uh, metacarpal bone. The base of the first metacarpal bone is concavo convex and it will make a synovial type saddle joint with a trapezium. First carpo metacarpal joint and the remaining carpo metacarpal joints are a plain variety of a synovial joint. Second the shaft. The shaft of the each metacarpal bone is concave on its palmar aspect and on the dorsal aspect it will show the triangular area in its distal part. The last part is a head. Head is articular and it will articular with the base of a proximal pharynx. Now the head of a first metacarpal bone it will present uh, two elevation along the palmar aspect which are the impression of a gliding of a sesamoid bones and the head will form the knuckle of our head this is the knuckle that is formed by the head of the metacarpal bone and it will articulate with the base of the proximal phalanx to form metacarpophalangeal joint which is a ellipsoid type of a synovial joint <coughs> now we will see the important attachment of the, all the metacarpal bones First, the palmar introsia. The palmar introsia are four in number. Out of these four palmar introsia, the first two will arise from the ulnar side of a shaft of the first two metacarpal bone. And the third and the fourth palmar introsia will arise from the radial side of the fourth and the fifth metacarpal bone. The second dorsal introsia, they are bipennate in nature, in type. Uh, and they will arise, they are also four in number and they will arise from the adjacent side of a sap of the all the five metacarpal bones. Now we will see the last type of the bones in the articulated hand that is the 14 phalanges. Out of these 14 phalanges, the two, the thumb will contain the two phalanges and the remaining forefinger, medial forefinger will contain the three phalanges. Now we will see the feature of the each phalanx. The it is having the base, shaft and the head. The base of a proximal phalanx is concave and articular. It will articulate with the head of a metacarpal bone and form the ellipsoid type of a synovial joint. Whereas the base of a middle and the distal phalanx is a pulley shaped articular surface and it will articulate with the head of a proximal and the middle phalanx respectively. The second the shaft. The shaft is tapering toward the head. It is having two surfaces, the palmar and the dorsal. 
the palmar surface is concave along its long axis whereas it is flat side to side whereas the dorsal surface is convex from side to side the third is head the head of a proximal phalanx and the middle phalanx is a pulley shape and the head of a distal phalanx is a non articulated and it will present the horseshoe shape tuberosity which will support the pulp space of a finger now we will see the important attachment of the phalanx the base of a distal phalanx uh, receives the insertion of a flexor digitorum profundus muscle and the shaft of the middle phalanx on the either side receives the insertion of a slip of flexor digitorum profundus that's all about the articulated hand thank you if you like our video then click on the like button and if you don't like then give your valuable comments below for the regular update please subscribe our channel viva boss of anatomy and if you want a regular notification of a future video then click on the bell icon